Uh, it's that time of year again where Uncle Sam wants his unfair share of crypto you made this year. Now with crypto laws changing, it's a good idea to prepare early and know how to file your crypto taxes properly. Now Biden, for example, has just signed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill with cryptocurrency tax provisions. Now if this bill is passed, it will enforce all legal cryptocurrency exchanges to notify the IRS of crypto transactions through a 1099. And that means that you will have to pay taxes on virtually any amount of cryptocurrency received or capital gains. And it also means that the new law will apply to other digital assets like NFTs and will direct brokers and businesses to file a report with the IRS if they receive more than $10,000 in cryptocurrency. As you know, guys, cryptocurrency is growing more and more popular each and every day. And with this comes more unwanted attention from the government. And for those that didn't watch the Super Bowl, Coinbase, FTX, Crypto.com, and even eToro all ran ads during the game. This so-called crypto bowl brought Coinbase more than 20 million people to its site in a single minute. Yeah, you heard me, a single minute. And it also brought a lot more unwanted regulation from the SEC. Now guys, BlockFi, for example, has just agreed to pay $100 million in penalties to the IRS for its crypto lending product. And Coinbase has also decided to drop its interest product after pressure from the SEC, which is pretty crazy considering that I just made an episode a couple of days ago in regards to Crypto.com's lending platform and basically other ways to earn passive income through cryptocurrency, which became staking and lending. Now, the SEC is also probing cryptocurrency exchanges such as Voyager Digital, Gemini Trust, and crypto lender Celsius Network as part of a wider investigation into crypto companies that actually pay interest on virtual token deposits. Now, with all that being said, guys, let's dive into today's video. So guys, in today's video, we'll be going over crypto regulations and the easiest way to pay and do your cryptocurrency taxes. Now, as you guys know, this is the tax season and as tax season approaches, we're going to have to start filing our own cryptocurrency reports. And what does that mean for you and I? This becomes an intricate thing as a lot of people don't actually realize how stressful it can be in regards to filing your cryptocurrency taxes the proper way, especially if you're going to try to do it yourself. So today I'm going to try to cover the differences and what you actually need to look out for when trying to file your own cryptocurrency taxes, as well as we're going to talk about what actually goes on behind the scenes when you do decide to buy cryptocurrency, sell it, or even just receive it as payment. So guys, year after year, the SEC and the IRS have been cracking down on all things cryptocurrency related, and this directly affects people like you and I. Not only that, the SEC has also been cracking down on people who don't actually tap the like button down below. So if you guys want to stay off the SEC's radar, definitely make sure to give it a tap as pressing it helps the YouTube algorithm and lets me know that you guys want to see more videos like this. Now guys, from the beginning, Coinbase, the top cryptocurrency exchange like everyone is familiar with, has began submitting 1099 forms to the IRS and individual users in 2017. And before that, it was actually pretty unregulated and you really didn't see any reporting of cryptocurrency at all on any exchanges. And I don't think many people actually paid taxes at all on cryptocurrency. And it wasn't until the following year in 2018 that the IRS filed a lawsuit against Coinbase in an attempt to identify 13,000 customers who may have actually underreported their cryptocurrency gains. And that's why this is important. Now, the following year after that, the IRS sent over 10,000 letters to taxpayers who were suspected of underreporting cryptocurrency liabilities in 2018. And the agency estimated that $11 billion of taxes went unreported from cryptocurrency transactions. Now, that's a lot of money to be missed out on. And that is a lot of fraud that the SEC is investigating. And not so long after this, in respect to to trying to stop money laundering and just understanding where this money is going and to try to stop people from trying to avoid paying taxes, they started to roll out KYC for cryptocurrency exchanges. Now guys, for those that don't actually know what KYC is, it stands for know your customer. You've probably heard us talk about it here on the channel a few times. And it's basically the thing that you do every time you try to sign up to a new exchange. And they basically ask you who you are, like on Coinbase, a picture of your ID, maybe you holding a sign with you know the date written. And it's more more so for anti-money laundering procedure. They also ask for a picture of your ID to verify if you're in a restricted state, such as New York, which is lovely, uh, to keep records of what you do with your funds. Now, this is only dependent on certain exchanges. Not all of them do this and require it. And obviously, there are some exchanges that are regulated and allowed in New York, but that also ties into the bit license and who's allowed specifically to market towards New York State customers. But with that being said, it wasn't until 2019 that the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network 
also known as some view by FinCEN, as well as the Commodity Futures Trading Commission known as the CFTC and the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission, issued a statement that defined cryptocurrency exchanges as money service businesses, thus making them subject to KYC regulations under the Bank Secrecy Act. So what that means is now cryptocurrency exchanges are considered a money service business. And by having a money service business, similar to Cash App or PayPal, you have to verify who your customer is if you want them to be trading around with crypto and fiat and, and money, pretty much. Now, the thing is that most KYC checks in the United States are actually done after the fact. And that means that on sign up, you are permitted to begin trading immediately and you are only stopped if KYC checks actually bring up something suspicious. And on other exchanges too, it allows users to open accounts without any KYC checks at all, but they also severely limit the amount of transaction privileges in the meantime, like lowering uh, withdrawal fees or not actually allowing people to withdraw at all. So definitely make sure to check out the exchange that you're currently signed up on or are planning to sign up on and definitely read the fine print because you don't want to deposit $10,000 of cryptocurrency into this exchange and then find out that you're not allowed to withdraw it unless you have to do KYC. And also lastly, some cryptocurrency exchanges also have decided to stop business altogether with US customers because they would rather just not do business at all or institute KYC procedures. They just don't care. And we've also seen this happen with with, uh, companies and exchanges like Bittrex, Polynex, and even Binance for a while actually restricted all halting. And then they created Binance US and then they stopped it entirely with uh, New York State. And that was specifically because of the bit license. They just don't want to pay it. But with all these new regulations being enforced, it really doesn't leave that many loopholes anymore to avoid paying your taxes. And honestly, you really shouldn't. You should definitely pay your taxes. Basically, if you wanted to avoid paying your taxes in cryptocurrency, the simple thing to do is to just not sell. If you don't sell your cryptocurrency, then you don't have to pay capital gains. Now, for those that are actually wondering if you qualify or meet any sort of threshold for cryptocurrency taxes, then let me explain. Because some of you might actually be confused and think that, oh, well, if you didn't receive or spend or buy or, or make a profit of over, let's say, $10,000, then you don't have to pay your taxes. That's what a lot of the restrictions were or requirements were back two years ago in 2021 or 2020 with things like PayPal that would only send you a 1099 if your uh, account actually received more than $10,000. That's not the same thing for cryptocurrency. And that's what I'd like to explain to you guys. Any exchange where you were able to simply convert crypto into US dollars and you did, then you owe taxes or at least have to report it. And this also works for crypto in and crypto ad exchanges that are also a regulated centralized exchange. So I would gather that maybe Binance US also reports this to the IRS. Now guys, if you earn earned more than $600 in crypto, Coinbase specifically is required to report your transactions to the IRS using a 1099. And even if you earn staking or rewards income below the $600 threshold, you'll still have to report the amount on your tax return. And this is also probably going to change for all cryptocurrency exchanges if that bill that Biden signed does get passed. Now, at this time, Coinbase only reports a 1099 to the IRS and they don't actually send you one, which is kind of a pain. And I was actually looking for this on the website site and I couldn't find it. I was, they only really give you statements, which is somewhat helpful, or it is definitely more helpful than trying to figure this all out by yourself, but not getting a 1099 also makes things a little bit more uh, difficult. This also means that the IRS does have, you know, all your records and transactions on file, and it really leaves only you to report these transactions to them. Or even if you receive it as a promotion or as payment for goods or services, like a sponsorship, it does also count as your regular taxable income and not your capital gains. So there is that difference, but regardless, however you received cryptocurrency, whether it was from making a profit on trading or from just receiving it as payment, you do owe taxes on both of them, whether it's income tax or capital gains tax. Now, what that means is you will owe tax on the entire fair market value of your cryptocurrency on the day that you received it at your regular income tax rate, whatever bracket you fall into. And if you decided to hold onto that cryptocurrency and decided to keep it, and eventually decided to spend it or even sell it, then you would actually owe capital gains tax on the profits that you had based on how long you've held it, whether it's short-term or long-term capital gains. Now, things get even more interesting when you start to work in like decentralized exchanges and, you know, swapping platforms.
platforms. But hypothetically speaking, this is all in reference to uh, centralized exchanges that you're paying taxes on. So you definitely have to do research on the platform that you're trading on, whether it's regulated or not, uh, centralized or not. Decentralized exchanges are different and they aren't reported to the government as far as I know. So what you do with that information is entirely up to you as those exchanges are pretty much all anonymous. You don't know who's really running them and there's no information back to it besides maybe an IP address and that can be changed with a VPN. Moving on to capital gains. Capital gains are profits from the sale of an asset such as shares of a stock, a piece of land, a business, or even cryptocurrency. But how much these gains are taxed actually depends a lot on how long you've actually held the asset before deciding to sell it and how much profit you made. So guys, as I mentioned before, your crypto also needs to be reported for capital gains and losses when you file your taxes. And tax season, you know, back in the day used to be fun. It was actually that like one month that I looked forward to, crazy as it sounds, that the government would actually send me a nice check in the mail saying how much my tax refund was, which was pretty cool because I thought I was making a ton of money as a kid. But eventually as I got older, I realized that the check that I received from the government was actually them repaying me back the money that they owed me because they took too much taxes out of my paycheck every single week. But eventually when I got older and I started working for myself, I realized that you get taxed a lot more when you're self-employed compared to a nine to five and you get taxed even more when you're self-employed and in cryptocurrency, because that means you have to pay income tax, self-employed tax, capital gains tax, and so many others. So with all that being said, tax season does become a lot more stressful when you are in the crypto space, because you have to keep records of all your transactions that you have from all your different wallets that are on a regulated exchange specifically. And what I mean by that is you can accidentally owe double your taxes than you thought you did because you didn't keep good records of them and you merely just pass them around back and forth from wallet to wallet when the government only sees plus 500 plus 500 plus 500 plus 500 they don't know that you've been sending the same amount back and forth to your own personal wallet so in the eyes of the irs they only see the gross total amount of everything that's been received in your account and it's only up to you to prove to them where it all came from and if all these wallets are owned by you so even though you know that you're sending it to and from yourself the government doesn't actually know that you are the owner of both of those wallets so so moving forward for this tax season, there are actually two things you must do to comply with the new law. Now, these consist of keeping track of what you actually paid for the cryptocurrency, in other words, the cost basis, as well as finding a tax professional who is knowledgeable about the digital currency space and can help report your crypto investments to the IRS. Now, fortunately, if you haven't got either of those, then you're in luck because I'll be sharing with you guys how I easily keep records of my hundreds of thousands of cryptocurrency transactions, as well as also also being able to share with you a good cryptocurrency accountant that I use and recommend. Now, the form that you actually need to fill out is called an 8949, and it does get quite tricky if you do decide to fill this out yourself. Now, to start, we have to take a step back and actually understand that people might refer to cryptocurrency as a virtual currency, which I hear all the time, but it's actually not true and different in the eyes of the IRS. Now, according to the IRS specifically, notice 2014-21, the IRS considers cryptocurrency to be property and capital gains and losses need to be reported on property on a schedule d and form 8949 so if you don't already have a list of your cryptocurrency transactions from last year or the following year upcoming don't worry, there is actually a website called Coinly that I recently discovered, which I also linked in the description down below, and I highly recommend you check out. And it's basically an online cryptocurrency tax platform that allows you to monitor all your cryptocurrency activities, as well as generates the compliant tax reports like that 8949 form that I was talking about. And I'm actually so glad that I found this website because for the past few years, I usually just downloaded uh, my Coinbase Pro trading statements and then manually sifted through all these different trades to see how much money I made in capital gains. So I had to add all the profitable trades and all the negative trades to each other and came out with the total amount that I made in profit and then had to report that to the IRS, which was crazy. Obviously, I had help doing this from my accountant until we found this website. Now, the cool thing with Coinly is that it allows you to integrate your wallets and keep track of activities, including trading, mining, staking, lending, airdrops, and more. And it basically simplifies the process by recording all the ins and outs of your transactions. And Coinly can even be used to automatically import all your previous transactions and all your future transactions and monitor all the market prices, wallet transfers, and calculate your crypto gains and losses to basically generate you the correct tax report, which for me saved 
tons of time. And the platform is also available in over 20 countries and integrates 6,000 blockchains, 350 different exchanges, and 75 wallets. And the platform can even be used for free, um, basically just to get a preview, which was cool to see. But what I had to do is actually purchase a plan, which is totally fine for me because it's wasn't expensive and it saved me a ton of time. And they basically range from like $49 to $179. For me, I got the like middle plan, which was only $99. It will figure it out for you, depending on how many transactions it's downloaded. And to me, it was well worth it. And I'm also able to write it off because I only need it for the business. Now, lastly, for those interested in a good cryptocurrency accountant, I have linked the info to my personal cryptocurrency accountant down in the comment section below with his information. So when you do reach out to him, just say, hey, Hayden, referred me so he knows where you are coming from and who you are specifically and then he'll help you guys out so guys if you would like to hire him or use his services to do your taxes definitely make sure to send him an email and i've also added a link to coinly down in the description below so definitely make sure to check it out too if you'd like help filling out that 8949 form otherwise guys that is going to wrap up today's video definitely make sure to subscribe turn on post notifications smash the like button for the youtube algorithm subscribe and i'll see you guys in tomorrow's video peace